back to another episode. This is the Real Talk with Adore and Daisy. I'm Adore. I am Daisy. Hey, y'all. Hey. What's going on, girl? Oh, it's so much going on, girl. <laughs> you know, it's so much going on. Congratulations to us again on the 100th episode. Thank you. Like, thank you. Congratulations. How did that make you feel? Um, how did it make me feel? It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like what we did um, is working. And it just gave me confirmation to never give up. Okay. How did it make you feel? Um, well, how does it make you feel hitting 100 episodes? It makes me feel um, like we've been working. Like we've been putting in hard work. Uh, we've been dedicated and we've been focused. Like. So it makes me feel a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. So it's like we've been accomplishing everything that we wanted to do. A little effort. Yeah. So moving forward, is there anything you would change? Um, I want to do more like, um, hmm. like I want to do more like, I don't want to just say girls night, but I want to do like more like empowering, uh, empowering conversations. I want to have like, you know how like when we first started, we honestly did have like topics and stuff that we wanted to talk about. So I kind of want to like get back to that. Like where if we get somebody here and we're talking about grieving because people grieve differently. Like we can talk to one person and see how they, you know. We can talk about grieving more than once with different people, and it's going to be a whole totally different conversation. So, like, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Up, I love uplifting conversations. I want to have more of those. Uh, we do have a lot of those, but, like, there's never nothing wrong with that. And as far as doing it differently, um, I mean... I don't know. You can have a conversation anywhere, so I guess that's the setting may be different. What about you? I'm in a season of intentional. I'm being like super intentional with what I'm doing, the conversations that I'm having, um, the the places that I'm at. So I want to have more intentional conversations. I feel like looking back on episode one through a hundred, obviously like it's no book on how to do it. I just feel like we found our era like we found what works for us mm -hmm. and because and i feel like when you add this to like apply it to your real life you can't lose so okay that's just where i'm at like i want it to be more intentional and be a bigger impact okay i like that i like that bigger impact um so before we go too deep into our conversation how's your mental health <laughs> um it could be better. It could be better. Um, I'm in therapy. I'm healing. And healing does not have, like, one topic. It's not always about relationships. It's about, like, childhood, friendships. And it's just about growth overall. And I'm in a space where it's, like, I'm growing, like, expeditiously. Like, I'm growing. Like, I'll go to sleep tonight and I'll wake up tomorrow feeling a whole different, complete way. So, like, I'm in this weird space to where the conversations that I'm having be having to change. Like, mm -hmm. I can't be, I can't be that friend that I once was that I could sit there and talk on the phone and it, I let hours go by and it's just a bunch of riffraff. Like, I don't want to have them conversations, at least not right now. And I'm in a space where I want people to respect the boundaries that I'm setting. Mm. So it's hard when you set boundaries for people you never had boundaries for because they're looking at you like you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you switching it? Yeah. No, I'm growing up. I'm growing up. I'm growing up. My mental health is good. Like, it just gets better. It gets better and better when you acknowledge, like, the problems or when you acknowledge what's wrong. Like, is, did we say we were going to stop saying like so much? Or was it yes. um, like and Like it was both? Yeah. I know I say like a lot. Yeah. Like, I mean like, 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 like. Okay. No. Like, like. <laughs> no, for real. I do. I be, Okay. 
We're going to stop saying like and um so much or we're going to stop saying it? You were saying um in the beginning. I was going to get there. Go ahead. Okay. Because you be trying to get what you're trying to say out and you be like, 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 yeah, um, like, yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> you should go with it. My mean. mental health is, it's just getting better. I am. <laughs> All over the place. Let's hear it. I am happy that I have accomplished, like, that's you can so use like when but, it's supposed to be. But, it's, but that wasn't even, it didn't have to go there. You said I accomplished goals like, and was you about to say the goals? I don't know. Okay. All right. Maybe I ain't going to think it too hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I ain't going to think it too hard. Relax, girl. She's nervous. I make her nervous. Are you talking to that English teacher? Like, uh, <laughs> um, mm, see? All right. All right. Let me just go. You happy? Because I'm happy because I accomplished goals, goals mm-hmm. like everything that I said I was gonna do this year. So it like coming to the end of the year, it's just making me feel like what all that you like everything you said you was gonna do, you did, and it just makes me happy to know that I could do it. It makes me so happy that I got it done and I did it by myself. So. That just makes me happy. I'm happy. Like, my mental is good. And I'm very appreciative of everything that I've done because it just brings more growth. It brings more opportunity. And it brings, what was I looking for in the beginning? Um, stability. <laughs> yep. Stability. So. Well, congratulations. <laughs> um, <laughs> congratulations on that. <laughs> Who is Daisy? Who is Daisy? Daisy or Sade? Daisy. Okay. They, Cause they two different people. So Daisy. He's like four different people. Go ahead. Definitely. But we gonna keep it to two. Daisy is a personality. Daisy is a public figure. Daisy is one half of Real Talk with Adore Daisy. Daisy is a boss. Daisy is fun, outgoing. Yeah, that's that's Daisy. Daisy is um, a, she's a joke when she wants to be. That's Daisy. I'm that's Daisy. Who who's adore? I I remember asking you that maybe like, um, like what two three weeks ago when we was on the phone and you was like, dang, like, I nobody ever asked me that. Mm-hmm. You had time to think of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I I realized that Daisy and Charday are two totally different people. Like. Daisy, <laughs> it's gonna really bother me now. I don't speak it out loud. I wish I was practicing at home, but yeah, Daisy is. She's cool. She's really cool. But I am more so becoming Charday these days. So they're two different people. Like I said, Daisy is more fun, outgoing with the whatever and Sade is more of the mom getting things in order and staying focused. Yeah, I'll say that. They two different people. Uh, Adore is a name. I wouldn't even that was my Instagram name. What Adore? Yeah. Oh yeah. It still is our Instagram. Yeah, name. for like forever. <laughs> Nobody ever called me that until you was like, oh, yeah, that should be because it was going to be Daisy and Autumn or Autumn and Daisy or something like that. But it's really no real correlation with that name to me. Like Adore? Yeah. Yes, it is. With your skincare line. Yeah, that might that might change. When you. I don't know. I'm all over the place with that because I'll be wanting to see my stuff in Ulta and Target. Like, I wanted something that's going to stand out. I don't know. So, I'm still up in the air with that. Although, I got a bunch of stuff that say adore your skin in the corner of my house. Just waiting. Just waiting. So, why haven't you put that out? Because my skin ain't even all the way together yet. Mm. I, I'm in the process of that. But the, the process then. This year, I've been super consistent with my skin. 
But it seems like the older I get, my hyper hyperpigmentation is out of control. Like, and I don't want to just put out a product just to say I got a product. Like, I want it to work. I, I'm just, I'm not where I'm not at my skin goals yet. So, so you don't want to put it out until you are. I want this to, skin. I want this to be like satisfied. Like this, this works because if it's up to me right now, it don't work. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the thing with skincare. Like it might not work for you all the way, but it might work for somebody else. Everybody got different skin. Mm -hmm. So I want it to be the face of the skin. So I want it to be able to be like, look at my clear skin. And this is the product. Like that's how I envision it. But I'm working on a whole different goal right now. Like, that don't, it's not even a, attached to a door that is going to put me farther. Period. I, want, I must say, I was like, okay, we did this with Real Talk. Let me work on some personal goals. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. I got this post that I had wanted to bring up. Yeah, my personal goals. I was definitely working on them at the same time. And like, oh, and when I, I just want to hit myself when I say it. You only making it obvious. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> my personal goals were meant to put me further ahead and it's just like you have to go through so much to realize what is going to put you ahead well I don't know if you have to go through so much I feel like I did but you also have to sacrifice yeah you do you have to sacrifice to it see was, the bigger picture. You have to sacrifice and everything is not going to be glitters and gold while you're going through that grind to get to the bigger picture. Like I told myself I was going into 2024. I'm not paying rent. I'm not paying a car note. And I bought me a house and I bought me a car. So it was, I don't have a car note and I don't have a house. That was my biggest thing this year. And I'm so thankful for it because it's just like all that money I was spending to live how I wanted to live temporarily. It's just that I was living like that temporarily. So what are some things you had to sacrifice? My way of living. I was used to um, getting a new car every two years. You know, I was leasing. So it just started not to make sense to me just because I wanted to look like I had money. And I was really... I didn't even have that money to spend on a car note. So I just had to downgrade, basically. I went and I cashed me a car. And I don't have a car note. And guess what? It did the same thing that I was paying $1,000 a month for. It, it's getting me here and it's getting me there. You was paying $1,000 a month for what? A car insurance. Oh, okay. Yeah, for a car I was going to say, now I know you was not. <laughs> I mean, pretty much when you round it off, it's $1,000. <laughs> And a thousand dollars a month to drive something when you could literally pay that thousand dollars maybe four or five times. I mean, just one time to for a car to still do the exact same thing. That's just where I'm at with it. Um, it's just, it's nothing flashy, but I own it and I can sell it um, whenever I want. You know what I'm saying? Like when it's a lease, you gotta be mindful of the miles. You gotta be mindful of the car. Period, because it's it's not yours. You paying a borrow. So I was just to the point like, what's the bigger picture? What do you really want? And I want to be able to see my money to where I'm going to be able to buy a car that I really, really want. Or if I'm leasing it, I want to be able to get to the point where I'm making that passive income or where I have that money to where I won't notice me paying a car note. And I wasn't there yet. So I downgraded. it. I downgraded, it. Um, and I feel like I'm going to have to live under my means to get to where I want to go. Um, so I sacrificed that alone, as well as with a house. Like, I don't have stainless steel appliances. I don't have um, cathedral ceilings like I used to. I live in a house, but I own it. And it's a four bedroom, it's spacious, and I can make it to whatever I want, but it's just not, it's, it didn't come like that. I'm putting it, it's something that I, I'm sacrificing to get to what I want. Mm -hmm. But it's mine, like, and that is the best part about it. I I can't get put out if I don't have the rent money because I don't have to pay no rent. Mm -hmm. That is a weight lifted off my shoulder. Do you know how hard it is, bro, to pay the rent and all the bills? Like, 
I mean, it, it's hard, but people do it all the time. And kudos to you. And I've done it for a long time. I'm just to the point where I feel like ownership is key. I have kids. And when you are paying rent, you can't pass that down to them. So it's something that I'm doing for them, for real. Um, it gave me it gave me stability, too. I, You know me. When I have a rent, I mean, when I, when I have a lease, I'm moving. I'm never really, I probably never stayed in my lease more than a year. None of the houses, none of the cribs. And it's just all that money wasted, like, literally to live. Like, you paying somewhere to sleep and, like, every day if you don't own it. So I'm just so happy. I'm just, I'm past that. I'm just so happy about that. My sacrifice right now is a social life. I mean, that wasn't too much of a <laughs> sacrifice for me, but it's like, it's a difference when you being forced to not socialize outside of obviously working. Mm -hmm. So I don't hang out. I don't go anywhere. Like I've been sacrificing trips though for some years since the pandemic because I used to love to travel, but that's kind of like my sacrifice right now. I'm sacrificing trips right now, too. I've been over 30 days. Get back at me in 90 days. With I will. You know I'm doing 90 no, days. I was just the... on the phone the other day about going to PR. In January. That's going to be my 90 days, baby. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but that's a sacrifice for me. Because tell me I don't go out of town once a month. So it's a sacrifice. I'm definitely, my, my goal, my original goal is 90 days, right? So that'll be January for me. But I'm, I'm really, really being honest. January is my son's birthday and I always take my kids out of, out of state for their birthday. He's only turning four though. I'm honestly thinking about skipping his birthday. He pizza and cupcakes and sing happy birthday. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be that simple, but. Birthday, because I don't do holidays. So, birthdays are, yeah. that's why I always go out of town for their birthday. So, um, but it would be six months if I just wait till my birthday. So, <sighs> I'm, um, I'm, it's really, really up in the air. Cause, of course, he, like I said, he's still young. Mario is turning four. So, it's not like he asking to go out of town. It's, I'm damn near going for me, for real. <laughs> just gotta take the kids. But, um, I am, that's I am sacrificing trips because even though yes the trip may the flight may have only been a hundred dollars it's I gotta spend about a thousand when I go so I am really learning to sacrifice that because I am definitely that friend that may not have the money but will have that flight and I will figure it out when I get there I am definitely that friend so I know if I can figure it out out of town <laughs> I can figure it out here and I can just use that money to. You know, put into my house or invest invest into real talk. So. That thousand dollars you gonna spend and that little hundred dollars for the flight you could have did the wall. Did, I mean, whatever. No cap for real. And I'm 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 literally there now. So I feel like a small sacrifice now. It might be a huge sacrifice, however mm -hmm. you want to word it. To live comfortably forever. Mm -hmm. It's that's worth the goal. It. It's yeah. worth it. It's it's worth it. And I wish so I wish more people thought like that because it wouldn't be so hard to stay you know um disciplined it wouldn't be so hard to be focused no nah, if everybody was disciplined i don't know how the world would be i didn't say everybody i just said i said i wish more <laughs> people because bro in our community it's like one in ten one every ten friends is on uh one every ten i would say like one out of ten because bro you probably can't even count ten, but <laughs> I'm just saying the I feel like the average is. is if you know what season I am, I'm in. Don't call me to be like, let's do X, Y, and Z when I you already know this the season I'm in. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, everybody not like that, but no. I found the post that I was talking about. Okay. It says Tia posted this. When you really want change, it may actually offend people to the point they have to bring up who you used to be, or they distance themselves. But this is where God we out was good for you and was bad soil. You couldn't grow with them anyways. I had to comment on this post. What did you say? I just put the... Praise the hand. Yeah. Amen. Because... Talk about it. Talk when you about when it. you changing and you're not who you used to be, people try to make you feel bad for that. Like, mm -hmm. they try to bring up, like, oh, but you wouldn't used to. Like, that's the... No, because that's not me anymore. 
And I feel like when you change, you can't go back. The devil gonna play, play took a word with you at all times, but you can't go backwards because all the hard work that you chose, like put in to move forward, mm -hmm. it's a waste of time. Now I'm not gonna say everybody gonna get it right the first time because I didn't get it right the first time, but I'm at the space now where I don't even want those people from behind me to even be in my near future. Mm. Like it's no love lost. Like I still love you. I still wish you will, but it's a reason we couldn't go together. And I, I find myself when I be in therapy, I be like, well, this person did this to me or said this to me, but I would have never did them like this. Like, I got to stop saying it. Like, yeah. I got to stop even thinking that way because everybody is not me. Like, I just do be thinking in, at the <laughs> side of my head, like, how I just got to get that thought out of my head. And that might be one of the hardest lessons I had to learn this year. Mm. I can't read the post again. You can read it. So they can get your side of the story. <laughs> when you really want change, it may actually offend people to the point they have to bring up who you used to be or they dis or they distance they themselves. But this is where God weeds out what's good for you and what's bad for you. You couldn't grow with them anyway. It's so hard letting people go that you feel like you wanted to be with forever. That's when you got to start, get a piece of paper, draw a line in the middle. How do they benefit you now? <laughs> and how would they benefit you? No, she did. For real. I'm, I'm, I that's the... like if little Tommy, when you helping your kids with the homework, <laughs> like that's really what you got to do. Like I had to tell somebody that the other day, like yeah. get you a piece of paper and draw it out. How do they benefit you now? And how do they benefit you in the future? It be comfort for a lot of people. And, it be comfort. But sure. once I realize you can't grow in comfort. You can name the time you grew when you was comfortable. You don't. Know, you grow when you're uncomfortable. You grow when you are sad. You grow when you are mad. When you're comfortable, you just con you you con you content. So you gotta go through the emotions. That's why I said it's just be hard to let go of people that you feel like you wanna you thought they were supposed to be in your life forever, but they not helping you grow. You just comfortable. I got to a point where I, I'm I'm ready to surrender fully to God. I've been going back and forth for years, but like now I'm to the point where I want to surrender because when I try stuff my way, it don't work. When I try to date the guy I want that I got in my head, oh, it don't Lord. work. Let's not talk when, about dating God, Lord, when please. I, <laughs> when I want to be friends with certain people, it don't work. When I want to go certain places, when it's just off of what I want to do, like it don't work for me. Nothing has ever worked for me, ever. Um, I don't know about, well, I feel like when you bring God into any situation, he going to bring the light to like who's supposed to stay and who not. We just got to be obedient and listen. Surrender. That's it. So it's to the point where it's just like, now that's just where I'm at. Because if I look back. When I was operating on my own, it wasn't really working. It might have been working for the moment, mm -hmm. but now I didn't grew outgrew temporary stuff. Like it's intentional. What are we doing here? Mm -hmm. How is this benefiting me? How is this benefiting you? What's up? I feel like when you are more intentional with the stuff in your life, it's um, it it just makes everything better. But I'm at a point where I just want to have fun. So you don't feel like you went to personally? Um, no, on the personal side of things, yeah, but on the daisy side of things, she just likes to have fun. <laughs> like Charde I... is serious. Charde is serious. It's it's hard it's hard <laughs> though, because like, do you feel like it's hard? What? I feel like you got a lot of more friends than me, so you kinda can weed like your okay, these my these my friends I'm gonna get down with. We're gonna go out, we're gonna turn it, then I got mm -hmm. my serious I don't got You're my only serious friend. I'm not serious. I'm intentional. Okay, you're my only intentional friend. Only? Um <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you need more intentional friends. Yeah. Start coming to prayer circle more. Yeah. 
You know what? You're not my only intentional friend. How about three of y'all? I give it to three of y'all. Yeah. It's a cool three of y'all. Maybe four. But the but the other ten. (laughs) Oh yeah. The only conversations we have is eat and drink. A little tea. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Do I have more, I mean, more party friends than intentional? I think I do. Mm. Do you feel like that's the phase you in? The phase I'm in? I honestly don't feel like my friends affect my phase. I feel like I can... I can weed everybody out and focus on what I'm, you know, what I need to do. But I, what you say, you're not supposed to move backwards. I don't know if that's moving backwards. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I just live my life, babe. I, I focus on what needs to be done. I celebrate when I do right. And I get back focused. But yes, I, I celebrate my win. So, with us being partners and totally different uh, opinions, <laughs> how is it getting over or moving past our differences? Um, it depends. Sometimes it'd be easier, like, if we let time go past and we talk about it. And then, like, a lot of times, sometimes it'd be via text. So if if it's a situation where we let time go past, I think that we both had time to sit on it. And then, like, when we had that conversation, you say how you feel, I say how I feel, and we try to come up with a solution. That'd be easier. But if it's something that got to get done right away, that'd be harder because it'd just be like, A red, uh, uh, a dead end. <laughs> I was trying to think of something. I love having another part of the team. Shout out to Global State Project. I feel like without them, I don't know where we will be. Because when we don't agree on something, we need a third party to like give us their opinion or you know another opinion. Because if it's just one versus one, we we can't pick. So. We probably wouldn't be partners. Yeah, if it was up to you. Yeah. How many times you want to quit? You will force me. You will force my hand, though. Because I don't agree with you? No, I just be like, you have come a long way, I can't say. But, like, you used to didn't care. Or if you did, you had no way of showing it. And that was just your attitude. It wasn't that we didn't get along. It was your nonchalantness that made me feel like you didn't care. And you can't be nonchalant about something you supposedly care about. So that's how I viewed it. And I'm just like, well, if she don't care, then why should I? Hmm. So it wasn't always the issue at hand. It was how you responded with mm-hmm. stuff. And you just like, well, that's just how I am. But like in the professional world, you couldn't be like that. I mean, you got way better, of course. But that you know, when we had those, that's why I was just like, you know what? I'm just not. Because it's okay to disagree. It's okay to do that. But it's not okay to be nonchalant with somebody you got to work with. And it's to have longevity. So it's like, imagine working with somebody who just don't care. We work with people who don't care. With nonchalant mm-hmm. attitudes. And how mad was you when they wasn't understanding where you was coming from? I get it. I'm just, I'm listening. I didn't say you were wrong, Miss Adora. <laughs> so. So Those were the days where I was just like, screw this. You know what? Know. You know what? what? You know what was different from now and then? What? I smoked a lot more back then. So I didn't express myself. If you notice now, I don't smoke as much as I used to. Like then it was never, I want to break. Or I, it was never, never. <laughs> it was, I'm, I'm smoking before, I'm smoking after. <laughs> I would smoke during if she smoked, but you know. <laughs> So, yeah, I was very nonchalant. I'll give it that. But, like I said, I'm not true. So, I don't express myself how you You didn't do. express yourself at all. Yeah. it was. Uh, that's, what I'm te- that's what I'm saying now. That's my whole thing. I'm telling you. It was, it was non-void because I was, 
I wasn't there mentally. Like I wasn't even down here on earth with our with our issues. I wasn't here. I was up there. So, you know, like I like I said, I got better. Slow down on that. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know it was the smoking. I, I'm just saying that's that's the only thing different. Yeah, then I'm just like in my head, I'm like, she had several partners before. This is not her first partnership. Like, how did she even settle differences with other partners? I don't think I ever asked you that, but I definitely thought about that a few times. Um, they didn't really go too good. That's why I always, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, no, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was me. I was more so because I was the, I was the head of it. So, yeah, I don't, it was wrong. I don't even want to talk about that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I Sometimes partnerships don't work because of the lack of communication or because people don't know how to communicate. Not even just the lack of communication, but how somebody come across or how they communicate. So, um, yeah, I would say that's about the past ventures. That's why I'm like, you should be a pro by now. <laughs> I, I should if I had more people to like actually talk things out with and not just say F it. But a lot of times I just say F it. So. Well, I mean, you just said something I don't think you ever said that you was up here and you wasn't here. Mm-hmm. That's like trying to relation, like me chasing a man. Like, hello, you see me trying to talk to you. Like, what you what you want me to do? And they be yeah, like, what am I supposed to do? Keep they don't even it's know. my man, my man. No, no, I'm just gonna leave this alone. Like, it was just, it was like pulling teeth. Like, do you see? You know, do what's going on? Like, so I'm just like, you no, know, because that's just. It's, Listen, that's where I'm at. No, I'm not pulling teeth for nobody. No, I feel you. I feel you. Now, I promise you, like, it just be like, now, to the point, if you can't communicate and thoroughly speak things through, I don't even want to talk to you, honestly. Yeah, I'm fine with, like, uncomfortable conversations. I'm fine with saying this is why I feel the way that mm-hmm. I feel. Like, I'm fine with stuff, even in friendships, relationships, anything, like, but that... I said, this girl is a man. Like, that's all I said, like, and you used to have me furious. Like, I used to want to fight. Oh, my God. And I'm just God. like, if I fight, that's like me being my old self. And yeah, look me. at that. Look at God. Bless your heart. So, I'm just like, yeah, no. But I'm to the point where I'm trying to make, I know that, like, problems and stuff, like, going to still come. But I just want it to be, like, as unproblematic as possible due to the fact that we both got other things going on mm-hmm. outside of just real talk. So I need my life to be as peaceful Amen. as possible. If it don't bring With a peace, capital P. If it don't bring peace, it got to leave. It got to go. Yeah. It got to go. It's a couple podcasts, people that um, reached out to me that started with a partner and like they wasn't on the same path. So I, I guess I could give that to us. I think that if we weren't friends, then it wouldn't have worked. Mm. Cause that respect level was still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we wasn't real friends. We got real friends. We wasn't Jeez. real friends. Cause you know, yeah, I don't friends. like this. Like I don't. <laughs> people just be when they get into an altercation, they got to disrespect. Like I don't. When you was 20, go on the internet, yeah, it's just too much. I'm not even. We no, we're no longer in cahoots. That's all. Like I don't get it. I seen um a group chat about a girl it was her birthday and her and her friends went out and she felt like one of her friends Friends overdressed her her. okay y'all can feel how y'all want to feel i can't take nobody feelings away but why did it have to go on the internet and you told them to dress like it was their birthday why would you (laughs) underdress like what what's wrong with you she has her own insecurities, so she got to take it out on somebody else. That's just what it bo- I feel like that's what it boiled down to. Yeah, that was crazy. Because I would have been like, all right, friend, I see you. It's your birthday, too. Like, yeah. that's how I would have played it. Like, Let me think about my birthday. Tell all my girls, you know, we stepping out on birthdays. Yeah, but you might overdress more than me, and I might overdress more than you. That doesn't make you better than me. Or yeah, I, it still wouldn't. It wouldn't. They done that's not weird. became friends and everything. After that. I don't think that ever happens to me before. Girls is catty and chatty. I'm not gonna lie, but that over that did it. Especially bringing it to the internet. That makes shade room and all type of uh, blood. I don't like how all, all these negative stuff just make the just go viral. Okay. Where's all the positive stuff? Man, I seen something so crazy on Twitter. 
It's always something crazy on Twitter, but it was a fight and a little boy, like he was trying to kick the girl, but he ended up kicking a little girl. He was trying to kick the girl that was fighting, but he ended up kicking the girl's daughter. The daughter was like four years old, screaming for her mom, her mom getting beat up. And the boy kicked her, like kicked her in the face, kicked her down. Mm-hmm. Didn't stop and check to see if the little girl was all right. Just proceeded to go kick on the mama. Like, I'm like, what the? Viral. I'm talking about viral on the internet. Yeah, it's great. I can't believe it. That's that's crazy. I did want to um, acknowledge that is isn't it d- domestic, domestic violence? violence? Awareness Word. Month. We're praying for anyone in that situation. We're praying for the ones that's still in it and don't want to talk about it. We got a resource we're going to link below. I had a couple of resources. Okay. So okay. below. We got yeah. a resource. Yeah, y'all. Um, I was in a domestic violence relationship way back when. Way, way. Like, way back for the 19th. No, I'm just playing. But. I'm glad I'm out of that. It wasn't a long thing, a long time coming. It was a, you know, I got hit a couple times and I was like, okay, I'm about to go. So I do pray for y'all strength to leave. That's it, that's all. Because it don't, it, don't, it don't get better until you leave. I haven't been in a relationship in my whole 20s career, so I haven't been. I wasn't in my 20s. When I was in a domestic violence relationship, I got my beats. Like, like I forgot you used to be real serious at seventeen. Exactly, <laughs> girl. Who? Why was I? Why was I fourteen with a stepson? I was Delusional. on Facebook looking at that stuff. Like, Delusional. bro, we had matching outfit, rockwear outfits on. You the kid? Me. Me, the boyfriend, and his son. We is at the park, girl. I'm like 14, 15 years old. I got a stepson at seven. How? How old was the man? He was 16, 17, but he had his kid at like... Or was he 18? I think he's four years older than me. Yeah, so I was 14, he was 18. He had his son at 13. So yeah, his son was five. I was 14 with a five, five-year-old. That's some shit. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> but I'm talking about... Yeah... As far as the domestic, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you overcame that. Yeah. I called I my girls. I said, come get me. I'm done with it. And I never look back. You ain't called me because I ain't know. Oh, I didn't know you. Uh, yes, no, I we, no, I was in the ninth grade. Oh, okay. I wasn't mean, yeah, no. Because I you always was coming to get you. <laughs> yeah, you was uh, always coming to get me. I had a car, okay. Or when I got, my car got sick. I was yeah. say you always had a car. <laughs> I always had a car, but, you know, things happen. But... <laughs> Yeah, I am glad I'm past that. Life is good right now. I'm in a very, 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 very ha- happy space. I'm like, Girl, I'm on. so I proud of you. I thought you was going to say I was in a happy relationship. I was about to throw this pillow at you. Oh, right now? Yeah. I am. Okay, I'll just get it. Just kidding. Y'all. Not today. Not today. <laughs> I'll be married next episode. but uh, <laughs> That's next week. I'll be married. Um... <laughs> You got any words of encouragement? Because you know we always got to look back and look at the older episodes before we get out of here. Words of encouragement, man. Do what's best for you. It doesn't matter how hard it is. It don't seem. It doesn't matter how lonely that road seems. Do what's best for you because everybody is not going to understand it. And everybody may not be on that path when you're on that path. And I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. When you stay down to and you stay true to what you really want to do because you the one that got to live your life. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm staying focused and I'm committing to all my goals because I know once I accomplish my goals, it's going to better my life and it's going to better my kids life. And that's where I'm at right now. Love that for you, Mama Daisy. My words of encouragement is to put God first. Amen. And immediately after put him first. That's all. Don't put him first. Get it, get it. And immediately after, put him first, first again. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ooh, amen. <laughs> Take us to church, you know. <laughs> We did go to church this morning, and I did get a good word. My cousin we went to was church. preaching. We went to church this afternoon. She's so mad that I wanted to go to the twelve forty five service. I had a breakfast date at ten. My girl. That's what I'm saying. Put God first. As I pr- I talked to him before I went to breakfast. <laughs> you could have went to the eight forty five, seven forty five. 
I went to the bed 45 and I was talking to God. And then I went to breakfast. I talked to him before I ate. And then I went to church. Like, Lord, I, I didn't put him first. Be the first person I talked to. <laughs> She is Cindy. Well, this was episode 101. 101. With your girl, Adora and Daisy. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And follow us on TikTok and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We love y'all. Until next time. Bye.